Hey, welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I am going to talk about input impedance. Now, it doesn't matter what type of amplifier you have, whether it's built from BJTs or if it's an integrated circuit or it's whatever kind of circuit is within this amplifier here, the amplifier is going to have some kind of input impedance. And basically, input impedance is the amount of impedance that the input signal sees when it gets applied to the input of the amplifier. So because this is a general feature of an amplifier, I'm going to draw a general amplifier representation. So this representation can be for a BJT amplifier, it could be for a FET amplifier, it could be for an operational amplifier. It doesn't really matter what type of amplifier it is, all of these amplifiers are going to have these characteristics that I'm talking about. The, the voltage gain, the input impedance, and the output impedance. In this video, I'm going to focus on the input impedance. So the general amplifier configuration or the representation looks like this. It's a big triangle. Input's applied over on this side. And this input is applied through this impedance, which is the input impedance represented by Z in. So whatever voltage is applied here is applied at across this Z in. So then this V in that's applied across the Z in is amplified by the whatever the circuitry is within the amplifier, and that is represented by a dependent voltage source, where the voltage source is going to be equal to the voltage gain of the amplifier times the input voltage that gets applied to the amplifier. And then that dependent voltage source gets driven to the output through this impedance here, which is designated as set out for the output impedance, and then that gets connected to the load. So this input impedance is a characteristic of the amplifier, but it can be determined by knowing what the input voltage is that's applied and measuring the input current that is going into the amplifier. And by definition, that input impedance is going to be equal to the input voltage divided by the input current. Typically, if this is if these are sinusoidal, you take the peak input voltage and the peak input current, divide those two numbers, and that's going to give you the input impedance. Okay, now let's take a look at why the input impedance is such an important characteristic of an amplifier. Now let's assume that connected to this amplifier is some kind of source. And this source has some kind of voltage, call it V source. And just like, just like this amplifier, this source is going to have some kind of output impedance, some amount of output impedance. Let's call that R source. Okay, so this, this voltage source is connected through its output impedance to the input of this amplifier, and the input of the amplifier is connected through its input impedance to ground. So basically what's going to happen is some kind of, uh, some amount of current is going to be generated from this voltage source, flow through the R source and through Z in. And the amount of current that's going through Z in is, depending, is going to determine what the V in is going to be because there's already going to be some drop across this R source, the voltage, the V in voltage, it will actually be less than the source voltage. Right? V source gets split between R source and Z in, so essentially this is, a, this is a voltage divider circuit. So if I was to redraw this to make it a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on there as a voltage divider, I've got this V source connected to R source here and connected to the Z in and then connected to ground with the common reference. At this point right there, that voltage across the Z in, that is my V in, that, that is my input voltage. So V in is some, going to be some fraction of V source based on the division of the voltage between R source and Z in. So V in is going to be equal to V source times Z in 
over z in plus r source. In an ideal situation, the z in is going to be very big and this r source is going to be very small. So that means that this term here will be pretty close to one. So the input voltage and V source will be pretty close to equal. All right, let's do a simple example where my V source is a 10 volt peak signal. The output impedance of the source is 50 ohms. The input impedance of the amplifier is one kilo ohm. And what we want to do is figure out what the input voltage is going to be based on, based on this input circuit here. So this 10 volt is going to be split between the 50 ohms and the one kilo ohm resistor, resistors. So Vn is going to be equal to this 10 volt peak. And then we've got the voltage divider between those two resistors. So it's going to be equal to 1,000 divided by 1,000 plus 50, which gives a value of 9.52 volts as a peak. That's not a lot less than the 10 volts, but it is significant enough to be able to, to, to pretty easily measure it. Now, what happens if this one kilo ohm resistor was reduced significantly to let's say matching this 50 ohm resistor here. So that Vn be equal to the 10 volt peak from the source times, well now this 10 volts gets split between this 50 ohm resistor and this 50 ohm resistor. That's going to be 50 over 50 plus 50 and that equals 5 volts peak. So if the input impedance of the amplifier and the output impedance of the source connected to the amplifier are equal to each other, then the voltage from the source is actually going to be cut in half by the time that it's actually applied to the amplifier. And we can say in general, the larger your input impedance, the closer the input voltage is going to be to the source voltage. And let's look at one more example where we make this input impedance really big. Let's say, 10 to the seventh ohms. So in this equation down here, I am going to get 10 to the seventh over 10 to the seventh plus 50. And this is 10 million over, divided by 10 million and 50. And you can imagine that's gonna be really close to one. And I did actually do this calculation on my calculator and it comes out to 9.99995 volts peak. So having this really large input impedance means that the input voltage is going to be very close to what the source voltage actually is. So that's one of the characteristics of general amplifiers. The other two characteristics are the voltage gain and this will be the this voltage gain here of the dependent source is the open circuit voltage gain and the other characteristic of the amplifier is the output impedance. So we've got these three characteristics the open circuit voltage gain the input impedance and the output impedance. In this video we've gone over what the input impedance is and how it affects the overall behavior of an amplifier circuit. You can watch, you can look for my other videos on how the voltage gain, the open circuit voltage gain, affects the characteristic or the behavior of the, the amplifier, as well as another video on Z out or the output impedance and how it affects the behavior of an amplifier. So I hope you learned a little bit and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.